Most of us travel on the roads and there are many deliveries that happen through the road networks like our online deliveries usually come to our homes and usually people are interested to know the estimated time of arrival. So the AI um, and machine learning can help in reaching more accurate uh, predictions. Traditionally, most people would just look at the history of the delays. So that's what we call a time series uh, prediction problem. But, you know, the cars did not just appear in this particular road segment. They came from another road segment from neighboring places. So that's what we call spatial temporal prediction in addition to time series prediction. What we do was to model the road network as a graph so uh, neighbouring road segments would have an edge connecting them and they would be strongly connected with one another since they are close to one another. And uh, more distant road segments would have a weaker connection with the road segment of interest. So at a particular moment in time, you will have like a snapshot. And then five minutes later, you can get another snapshot and, and so on until you have you know, lots of data. And where we came in was we felt that one of these spatial temporal graph convolution networks or STGCNs in short may not like work as well as several of these spatial temporal graph convolution networks because of the complexity of traffic prediction in large scale road network which are affected by many things. So we decided to adopt a mixture of experts approach where we use multiple spatial temporal graph convolution networks that control by what we call a gating network that actually has to learn which spatial temporal graph convolution network to use under different conditions. By having like say four uh, spatial temporal graph convolution networks, you obviously increase the number of parameters four times, the training uh, computation requirements increases four times, memory increases four times and so on. So after we did this, we were very pleased to note that we can get about five to 10% improvement in prediction accuracy. The IPU is very interesting development because it allows multiple instructions and multiple data to be processed on different tiles. This is actually very useful when you have uh, operations which are not homogeneous. And in mixture of experts, because we are having multiple expert neural networks, this parallelization on multiple tiles and IPUs obviously helps in speeding up mixture of experts computations. But the gating network operations are different from the expert network operations. So therefore the multiple instruction nature of um, the IPUs um, would help. So uh, when we compare the GPU platform with CPU, we can obtain typically about 50 to 80 times speed up, which is impressive. But then when we compare the performance of the IPU versus the GPU, we get another three to four times speed up. But if you compare the IPU performance back to the CPU, it's about 200 to 300 times speed up compared to CPU. With the speed ups that are achievable by using the IPUs, first of all, we can consider larger models with uh, more layers. And that tends to uh, produce more accurate predictions. The speed up also shortens the time to get results and may even allow for real-time operation. So for example, if you want to have real-time traffic speed predictions, for an entire city, as seems possible by using a graph convolution neural network, you can harness the speed up on the IPU for near real-time traffic state predictions. And then a third way that the speed up in the IPU uh, can be useful 
is we can consider larger and more complex problems and road networks, for example. Perhaps in the past, maybe we can only consider one or two districts in the city, but with the additional uh, computational uh, power available and speed ups uh, that are possible, we can consider a, a city scale model. So this is where I see there are three areas where the IPU architecture can actually make a difference.